Go ahead. Far more than previously disclosed by the White House. Three current and former government officials Stop. telling... Three current and former government officials. Democrats, Obama holdovers, former Obama officials. This is what we're talking about. They leaked specifics about information in these intelligence reports that the NSA had through intercepts, through the incidental collection of information. 18 specifics about conversations and intercepts. Go ahead. Reuters, the contacts occurring by telephone and email between April and November of 2016. Stop. Did I hear telephone and email? Intercepts. Well, maybe even wiretaps. Intercepts. In these reports. Felony leaks. And the Reuters story is, well, it happened more times than the uh, Trump administration ever, ever told us. Well, how would the Trump administration even know? Go ahead. A time when U.S. intelligence services have concluded Russia was trying to interfere with the presidential election. Reporter Ned Parker has the story. After learning about these calls and contacts, Reuters uh, spoke with several advisors to previous presidential campaigns, all of whom said such a high number of calls and contacts, that number and volume is unusual. That's not the story. The story isn't that. The story is the campaign was being surveilled by the Obama administration. Call it incidental, call it whatever you want. And they took that information, they unmasked the names, they took the information, and they circulated it, and now it's been leaked to Reuters. Now, how is it leaked to Reuters? Because members of Capitol Hill, Congress members, have been read into some of these uh, uh, documents. They've had access to some of these documents. They and others are now leaking the information to Reuters. 18 specific examples. There's no evidence of crime. There's no evidence of selling out your country. The evidence is overwhelming. This is what I explained three months ago. These are police state tactics. They're now using information they shouldn't even have, spilling it into Congress, spilling it into the media to try and dirty up this administration and dirty up the President of the United States. It's unbelievable the extent to which the media are going along with this. Not just going along with it, but leading this pack. Go ahead. Includes six phone calls to Trump advisors, including Flynn, by Russian Ambassador Sergei Kislyak. Stop. And 12 Who cares? How many call phone calls there were between this one and that one? Why does it matter? Was there something in the... What were they doing? Were they... I mean, was there something criminal? Who cares if they had six or 6,000? Go ahead. Other calls or emails by individuals with links to the Kremlin. After the election, Flynn's contacts with Kislyak intensified. They were discussing how to create a back channel between then president elect Donald Trump. So what? It's done all the time. Back channel. You know what that means? A direct channel between the, the Oval Office and the Kremlin. It's done all the time. They used to have a red phone, you know, pretend. Hello? Vlad? Yeah, okay. It's a red, uh, Dick Nixon here. But anyway, so what? So this is all process stuff. There's nothing wrong. And if you think there's a crime, then damn it, go to a federal district judge and get your damn warrant. But they don't do that. Go back to that FISA judge who's furious with you and explain it to her. Yo, she won't buy it this time. So, oh, well, look at all these contacts. And this is just unbelievable. They're creating, uh, they're, they're insinuating, they're making suggestions and so forth and so on. But there's nothing here except the police state tactics. Go ahead. Russian President Vladimir Putin to bypass the U.S. national security bureaucracy. The feeling was that the Russians were concerned that the U.S. national security bureaucracy would perhaps poison the efforts between the incoming Trump administration and Trump aides and Russia to improve the fraught U.S.-Russia relationship. So what? And more and more, it's... It's obvious why they were trying to create a back channel, isn't it? Look at all the leaks. Look at all the activities going on. Now we have uh, Kushner, Jared Kushner, the liberal Democrat son-in-law of the President of the United States. Very nice guy, I've told you, I've met him before. I just don't agree with his politics, which are quite left-wing, or Norivanka's for that matter, but so what? That's not my point. 
CNN State of the Union. Anybody watch that? Sure. If you're a crazed liberal, you watch it. Why wouldn't you? Um, Jerry Kushner was trying to back channel with the Russians. Well, how do we know that? Because it was leaked. From where? From one of these intelligence reports. Well, how'd they know his name? Because they unmasked it. Well, did you do something wrong? No. No, no. Domestic surveillance, political surveillance, leaking one at a time on Sessions, leaking on uh, Flynn, leaking on Jared Kushner, leaking on, on Trump and so forth. You see what's going on here? And meanwhile, many of you, or somebody, is caught up in all this too. Because in order to focus in here, 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 you got to get this, this, this. Right? All these, these violations of protocol and privacy and all the rest. Well, you don't understand. We were going after terrorists. Well, nothing's being leaked about terrorists. It's all being leaked about Trump and Trump transition officials and they're supposed to... Hey, do you know there were 18 contacts with the Russians? Really? Wow. How many are there supposed to be? Is there a rule somewhere? I don't even know. Anyway, check this out with Lindsey Graham, May 28th. Go. I don't know who leaked this supposed conversation, but just think about it this way. You got the ambassador of Russia reporting back to Moscow on an open channel. Hey, Jared Kushner is going to move into the embassy. I don't trust this story as far as I can throw it. Now, let me stop. He's exactly right. It's Russian disinformation. That's what it is. And they're putting it out there. And our media is so stupid, they're running with it. But again, that's not my focus. My focus is that it winds up in these reports and it's leaked. It's domestic surveillance through the back door. Through the back door. James Rosen over at the Fox News Channel. Unmasking Obama administration unmaskers. I'm bringing it back full circle. Remember I started the program with Samantha Powers and Susan Rice and, uh, and Brennan and so forth. Well, here's the, the report on that. Go ahead. Fox News has confirmed that the FBI and CIA and the National Security Agency were all served today with subpoenas issued by the House Intelligence Committee. Sources said each of these subpoenas referenced unmasking and each named as figures of interest three senior Obama-era officials. Former White House National Security Advisor now Susan Rice... The irony here is he's doing this report. He was subjected to an Obama administration investigation. He was surveilled. That is... His phone, his, his cell phone, as I understand it, along with the Associated Press and so forth. But he is a victim of domestic surveillance by the Obama administration. Go ahead. Rice was identified by multiple news organizations last month as someone who requested that names of Trump associates that had appeared in coded form in classified intelligence reports be identified for her and or unmasked. And you may recall before it was officially mentioned that Susan Rice was involved in unmasking, I said we need to get to the bottom of this with Susan Rice and Ben Rhodes, her deputy, and I named a few others too. But she was definitely one of them. Go ahead. I'm denied wrongdoing and told us today through a spokesperson that she is unaware of any subpoenas, quote, directed at her. Former CIA Director John Brennan was also named on the subpoenas. In testimony last week, Brennan decried the leaks of classified information that have bedeviled the Trump administration and which some believe was linked to the unmasking activity. Brennan declined our request for comment. Most noteworthy was the subpoena's naming of Samantha Power. The former U.N. ambassador has not previously surfaced in the unmasking controversy. A Pulitzer Prize-winning historian, Power served in Barack Obama's Senate office before joining his administration. House investigators told Fox News, they are now devoting greater scrutiny to power because they have come to see her role in the unmasking as larger than previously known, allegedly eclipsing the others named. Contacted by Fox News today, Power declined to comment. Today's disclosures about Samantha Power may explain a somewhat cryptic exchange that occurred at the Brennan hearing last week, initiated by Republican Congressman Trey Gowdy of South Carolina. Do you recall any U.S. ambassadors asking that names be unmasked? I don't, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's ringing a vague bell, but I'm not, I could not answer with any. Bell. Oh, that's a good one. 